What is community? Community are a people who are considered as a unit because of their common interest, social group, or sometimes nationality. A community is a social group whose members have something in common, such as a shared government, geographic location, culture, or heritage. More generally, community can refer to a group that shares some trait or quality that separates it from the wider population. However, church community is doing life together with other Christians in a way that reflects the love of God. So coming to church is more than just receiving the word and rushing off. It's important that we intentionally interact with one another. This is why we do the hangouts, to give you an opportunity to fellowship with one another and build relationships. Toyin was telling me of a lady that stayed behind for one of the hangouts and she happened to meet two women that happened to come from the same nation as she was from. But they didn't know each other before, but the fellowship of the hangout allowed them to come together and build a friendship. Psalms 133 verse 1 says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. So as I said before, church community is doing life together with other Christians. But how do we do that? We do that by loving and honoring one another. John 13, 34 to 35 says, let me give you a new command. Love one another in the same way I loved you. You love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. Romans 12, 10 says, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. We do church community by encouraging one another. Hebrews 3.13 says, But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We do church community by bearing each other's burdens. Galatians 6.2 says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. We also do church community by praying for one another. James 15, 16, Amplified says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. We do community by being patient with one another, by forgiving one another. There should not be anyone in this place that should be having beef. Praise God. They come from the front, you pretend you forgot something in the car and turn the other way. No, 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 no. Not in land of wonders. We are to be patient with one another, forgive one another. Ephesians 4, 32 says, be kind and helpful to one another. Tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding. Forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. We do community by serving one another. Galatians 5.13 says, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. In church community, we speak life to one another. We grow in faith together. The list goes on and on and on. But these examples of how we do life together as a church community highlights the power and the importance of church community and why you shouldn't be a lone ranger. So the title of my message today is Stronger Together. Stronger together 
I want you to say to your neighbor, you and I, now I want you to say it with energy, you and I are stronger together. Say it to your other neighbor, you and I are stronger together. One of the greatest stories in the Bible that talks about community involves a paralyzed man and his four friends who brought him to see Jesus. This story that we're going to look at today shows the value of community. It shows us the importance of surrounding ourselves with the right people. But it also shows the significance of not isolating yourself. So in this story, we have a paralyzed man who has lived his whole life on a mat. Unable to do basic things that most people could do by themselves. Someone had to bathe this man. Someone had to clothe him. Someone had to feed him. Someone had to clean him up after he soiled himself. They would have to move him, this man often so that he wouldn't be covered in bed sores. Because he was totally bedridden. Life for this paralyzed man, or life for paralyzed people in general, in the ancient world was incredibly challenging. Challenging because there was no NHS. There was no medical care that this man could go to. This man's condition meant that he had to be a beggar for his whole life. He couldn't work, he had no money. So he was dependent on other people's charity towards him. When we look at this man's life, it seems as though this is how this man would live for the rest of his life. It seemed like this man had nothing going for him. But what if I told you that this man was very blessed? His circumstances didn't suggest that he was blessed. Yes, his story was completely helpless, but this man was blessed because he had community. And it was this community of friends that heard that Jesus was back in town and they took this man to see Jesus. Because of community, he was stronger when he was together with his friends. As an individual, he had no chance. Who would carry him to see Jesus? He couldn't carry himself, but he was strong when he was together with his friends who wanted to see him healed. It was through his friends, it was through his community that he was able to see Jesus and receive a breakthrough that would change his life forever. Sometimes in life when you're down and out, You need your community to carry you. You need them to carry you when you can't carry yourself. So today we will be in the book of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Mark 2, 1 to 12. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, Several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room. Even outside the door, while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, 
grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. May God bless the reading of his word. So news had spread about the miracles that Jesus was doing in the region. And the word on the street was that Jesus had returned back home and had been back for several days. This small community of friends had heard of Jesus' arrival and they saw his arrival as an opportunity to take their friend to be healed by Jesus. So off they went to see Jesus carrying their paralyzed friend on his mat, knowing that this mission will be a logistical nightmare. Carrying a grown man on a mat would not have been an easy task. Especially in that part of the world, the Mediterranean, where the sun was beating down on them. I'm sure there were times where they probably had to stop a few times and lower their friend to the ground and catch their breath. When we look at the actions of these four men, there are a number of major factors that stand out. Factors that powered their determination and dedication towards their friend. Factors that must be in the fabric of any church communities. These factors cause a community to be strong, vibrant, and effective. So the first major thing that we see is genuine love. It was their love for their friend that caused them to want to see his condition changed. They didn't become comfortable with his condition and say, it is well, my brother. No, his friends carried him to go and see Jesus because he couldn't carry himself. This was love in action, not just in speech. Too many people are good at speaking, but not backing up what they're saying. When we walk in love, our love for one another wouldn't allow us to be comfortable with a challenge that a fellow community member is going through. When we walk in love, you will know that it's not enough to say, it is well. It's not enough to say, it is well, when your brother or sister has come to you and poured out their heart, and then your response is, it is well, my brother. It is well has no impact on what they're going through. Love will cause us to take out time to pray with them. In fact, love will cause us to sometimes even fast with them. When God's love is amongst the people, when God's love is amongst the community, everyone wants to see everyone lifted. There's no jealousy. When one suffers, everyone rallies around that person and pleads that person's case to God. And this is what these friends did. They rallied around him and they took him to see Jesus. And as they got to the house that Jesus was staying at, sweating and out of breath from carrying their friend on the mat, we read that the house that Jesus was teaching at was at full capacity. People had gathered in large numbers. There was no more room. There wasn't even room outside of the door. The house was rammed. People had come from all over the town to see and hear Jesus. These four men wanted to get their friend inside the house, but no one would let them in. Just picture the scene. These friends are trying to get inside. They say, excuse me, we need to get our friend inside. The people at the door look back at them. They make eye contact at the man on the mat. They look at his friends and they turn back around without making room for them to come inside. They totally ignore these men. The people in the crowd probably thought to themselves, we too have come to be be touched by Jesus. Wait your turn. At this point, the friends were probably disappointed. They were excited to see Jesus, but they couldn't get in. Jesus, the man who had the solution to their problem, was just a few feet away 
but they couldn't get to him. The way the crowd responded is not community. Community is helping others, reaching out to others, even while you are in a trial yourself. When we reach out to others, when we help others, when we're going through things ourselves, there is no way that God will not honor you. In fact, the paralyzed man's four friends very likely had their own issues. They probably had their own issues that they had to deal with in their own homes, but on this day, they put their friend first. And despite not being able to get in, they weren't going to give up. But at this point, most people would have given up. Most people would have seen this obstacle as a sign. We came and we weren't able to see the man of God. Let's go home. Some would have said, since Jesus is back, has been back home for several days, I'm sure he'll be around tomorrow. Let's come back then. But not these friends. They weren't leaving until they got what they came for. Because sometimes on your way to your breakthrough, the enemy will use obstacles to tempt you to give up. At the edge of your blessing, the enemy will use obstacles to try and delay your blessings. But obstacles could not stop these men. They were desperate. And it was love that was feeding their determination. You see, when we truly, want an, we, when we truly love one another, we won't take no for an answer. We won't accept the report of the enemy concerning the member of our church community. Love makes us go the extra mile for our fellow community members. Love will make us look for solutions to help our fellow community member. And this is exactly what this man did. They had to think on their feet. They had to get resourceful. Then suddenly one of them received a divine idea. That divine idea was to remove part of the roof that Jesus was in and then lower their friend to the ground in front of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, this shows how much faith these men had. They were so confident that Jesus was going to heal their friend, they were willing to do anything. They were ready to mash up someone's roof and sort out the repair later. They were like, it's going to be worth paying for the repairs of the roof because we know our friend will be healed. Sometimes your, your breakthrough requires you to think outside of the box. Don't give up so easily. For some of you, your breakthrough is just one idea away. In fact, for some of you, your breakthrough is just one thought away. Just one thought that God drops in your mind and bam, you've received your breakthrough. Love brought this paralyzed man to the house that Jesus was in, but that wasn't what healed him. It was faith in action that got him past the obstacle and on the roof. And that is the second factor that we need amongst the church community. Faith. Faith in Jesus. Faith in Jesus' track record. When we have faith in Jesus, it empowers a community to stay steadfast and rock solid no matter the challenge we're going through. During the times of Jesus, houses in this part of the world normally had an outside staircase that led to a flat roof. The roof would have been packed with clay and had wooden beams and would have had branches on top. So it would have taken great effort for these men to carry their friend up the, st the, the stairs onto the roof and then begin to make a hole big enough to lower him down in front of Jesus. But this is what love and faith amongst the community will do. People will go above, beyond and above for each other. So Jesus is preaching the people are locked in. The people are being blessed by the message. They're shouting hallelujah. They're shouting amen. They're shouting Jesus preach. But 
all of a sudden everyone in the house becomes distracted. They're distracted because there's a commotion happening on the roof. And out of respect for Jesus, they try to ignore the noise and refocus on the word that's being shared. But not only is there a racket up there, dust and debris begins to fall on Jesus. There's dust on his clothes, there's dust in his hair, and Jesus is trying his best to stay focused as he is preaching, but all of a sudden the crowd gasps because they can see the sky through the roof. At this point, the owners of the house pass out because they just remortgaged the house. (laughs) The hole gets bigger and bigger, and at this point, Jesus stops teaching. And he and the crowd... They stare at the hole and they see the four friends sweating and out of breath. And one of them apologizes and say, sorry for the interruption, Rabbi. We brought our paralyzed friend to this meeting, but we couldn't, and we know that you can heal him, but we couldn't get in. Allow us to lower him to the ground in front of you. And at that, they began to lower their friend down in front of Jesus. And when the paralyzed man finally reaches the ground, Unlike most pastors, Jesus was not angry at the interruption. If you try that in this day and age, some pastors will curse you. What are you doing? Like imagine happening now. Some of you will even run out the building. Jesus doesn't get angry. Sometimes the sermon should be interrupted because the Holy Spirit is up to something. He isn't annoyed that there's dust all over his, his, his clothes. You know, pastors, they like to dress up and look like drip. And Jesus is not annoyed. Clothes can be washed. No, no, no. Jesus was full of compassion. And his response to the paralyzed man is, My child, your sins are forgiven. I'm sure Jesus was amazed at what he was seeing. He wasn't annoyed. But as Jesus said, my child, your sins are forgiven. At this point, his friends were probably thinking to themselves, this is not the reason why we came all the way here. This is not why we destroyed a roof and have to pay for it later. Our friend needs healing. However, Jesus knew there was a deeper issue beyond healing. There may have been some spiritual aspect to this man's paralysis. Sorry, paralysis. Because in Hebrew Hebrew culture, people believed that some people were sick because of their sins. And Jesus knew that there was a spiritual element for this man being paralyzed. Because Jesus first said, your sins are forgiven before telling him, stand up and pick up your mat. So this highlights that spirit, the spiritual details of this man's life were more crucial than his physical healing. It would have been to his detriment to be healed but not forgiven. Unforgiven sins are more detrimental than unhealed limbs. Spiritual sickness is worse than challenging circumstances that are physical. It is spiritual healing that can reverse sin's physical consequences. Someone needs to tweet that. After Jesus forgives this man, he has an exchange between the the religious leaders who believe that Jesus is blaspheming because only God can forgive. But what they failed to recognize was that Jesus was God standing in in front of them. And what comes to mind is, don't miss God when he's in your midst. That's not even in my notes, but that's for someone. When God is in a place, don't miss him. They totally missed that God was standing before them. And after the exchange in verse 10 to 12, it says, So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And then the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, 
walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. All of a sudden, just like that, never again was this man confined to a man. This man's life completely changed. His world had enlarged from a mat to as, 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 as far as his feet could take him. He could work, he could provide for himself, he could probably now start his own family. Not only was his body healed, his heart was healed too. Every sin had been forgiven. This man's life had completely changed because of one encounter with Jesus. That's all it takes, one encounter. This group of friends, this close-knit community of friends got what they came for and much more, showing that the collective faith of a community has incredible power. In the same way as we, Land of Wonders, come together as a community and present the needs of fellow community members at the feet of Jesus, there will be miracles and breakthroughs. There will be restoration of lost hope and dreams. In the name of Jesus. All of a sudden, this man's life had enlarged. No longer was his life confined to a mat. But he could go as far as his feet could take him. Not only was his not only was he forgiven and healed, the same people that didn't make way for him to enter the house now had to make way for him as he walked out of the house with his breakthrough. The man entered the house in a battered condition. This man was mocked and judged by the people from where he was from. But this man was told by Jesus, you're forgiven, you're healed, you're right with God. He left the house, the same house, in a restored condition. Some of you may have entered land of wonders broken, battered and bruised. Some of you may have entered this church with one issue or the other. But today I prophesy to you that you will become restored and renewed. Your life will be healed and transformed in the name of Jesus. No longer will you be held by yesterday. From today, you walk into God's prepared place for you in the name of Jesus. What this man, what Jesus did for this man, he can do for you. When this man arrived at the house with his friends, there was no way in. People didn't want to move out of the way for him. So again today, I prophesy into your life, those people that are blocking your way, those gatekeepers that are refusing your entry, those people that have constructed glass ceilings so that you will not rise above it. From today, they make room for you in the name of Jesus. They will open the gate for you, for you to enter in the name of Jesus. God grants you access in the name of Jesus. They will witness you walking out with your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I hear this clearly, even if it means that God has to remove some people so that you can enter, he will remove them out of the way. If it means someone has to be sacked on your behalf, let it be so. This story ultimately shows us how God responds to a people, how he responds to a community that come under the banner of his love and faith. God responds to such a community with mercy, compassion and forgiveness. When we come together in love and faith, God responds by healing the people, by, by performing miracles and restoring the people. Why? Because it brings him glory. God wants to move in our midst because it brings him glory. It causes the people of the church community to praise and celebrate him. 
when we come together under love and faith, God does the miraculous because it strengthens the people's faith. When you see your brother or sister receiving their breakthrough, it builds up your faith. If God can do it for them, he can do it for me. It encourages those that are down and out. It shows that God is in the midst of the people. Again, this story keeps showing us the power of community. Listen, this man didn't receive his healing because of his faith. No, the passage says, seeing their faith. When Jesus saw their faith, the key word here is their. Jesus saw the faith of the collective, the faith of the group of friends, the faith of this small community. And it was this collective faith that resulted in the man being forgiven and healed, meaning there will be times as individuals when we're going through things and we don't have the strength to be strong. Times when we can't muster up our faith. Times when we can't read the Bible. Times when we can't pray. Times where we're unable to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And this is when we should be able to lean on our community. A community that is selfless, just like these men. A community that will be resourceful, just like these men. A community that hopes in Jesus, just like these men did. A community that won't give up when the enemy throws obstacle after obstacle at an individual that's being attacked in our community. My desire is for Land of Wonders to be a community that collectively carries each other to Jesus. Not pushing through crowds or breaking roofs, thank God, but through prayer and fasting and great faith. This is community. A group of believers that love their neighbor as they love themselves. A group of people that are their brother and sister's keepers. This is my desire. This is God's desire for this house, Land of Wonders. To create a safe space that you can call home. A home where you know people have your back. A home where you know that when you need to be picked up, the people are ready to pick you up. So today I encourage you to make Land of Wonders your church community. Stop being an island. Stop keeping yourself to yourself. Myself and God are giving you an assignment before you leave today. I I know you will listen when I say God, me and God. We have an assignment for you today. Before you leave today, please speak to at least one person you don't know. If you see someone that's on their own, strike up a conversation. Build relationships. Why? Because we are stronger together. Let's rise on our feet. Begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Thank you for this word. Lord, we thank you for this word. We worship you. We magnify you, O God. Thank you, O God. Lord, may we be doers of this word, Heavenly Father. No longer spectators, Heavenly Father. Walking in and out of the church building without making connections, Lord. Lord, give us the grace to connect. Give us the grace to build relationships, Lord God. And those of us that find those kind of things intimidating, give us boldness, Heavenly Father. Boldness to reach out to people. Lord, even give us boldness to speak out when we need help. There are many of us that do not speak out when we need help. And by the time we find out, it's too late. So Lord, give us the boldness to speak out. Give us the boldness to connect. With everyone praying in the spirit, praying in your understanding, praying in the spirit. I want to call to the front those of you that feel like that paralyzed man. You've gone through so much. But you're at a stage where you can't carry yourself no more. You're discouraged. And you need your community to come around you. I want you to come to the front. 
I don't want you to watch face. This is not about who's watching me. I want you to come to the front if you, you've been feeling discouraged and you just need a shoulder to lean on. You need a community that will pray for you, a community that will speak into your life. I want you to come to the front. And everyone in the crowd, I just want you to pray. Pray for your brothers and sisters that are in the front. This is what community is about, speaking life to our fellow community members. Church is more than just hearing a sermon and going off home. No, no. Hearing a sermon is good, it's needed, it's important. But we are also to connect with one another. Come on, pray for your brothers and sisters. Today, God is going to restore your joy. Today, God is going to restore your peace. God is going to give great meaning to your life today. Heavenly Father, commit your daughter into your hands, Heavenly Father. Lord, I remove the weight, the weight that is all over her, Heavenly Father. The weight that is holding her down, Heavenly Father, Lord God. Lord, all the responsibilities that, that are weighing her down, Lord God, I ask, Heavenly Father, that you begin to help her, Heavenly Father. Begin to help her to navigate, Heavenly Father, through all these responsibilities, all these tasks that she has been tasked to do, Heavenly Father. She feels like giving up. She feels like it's too much for her to handle. But right now, Lord God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will strengthen her in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will pick her up back on her feet, Heavenly Father. I pull you out of the pits in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that you stand on the solid rock, Jesus. No longer do you wear the coat, cloak of heaviness. I remove it from you in the name of Jesus. I remove it from you in the name of Jesus. Receive the joy of the Lord in Jesus' name. Can the ministers and pastors please help me to pray with those in the front? Heavenly Father, commit your son into your hands. Let's, let everyone be praying, please. Let everyone be praying. Rakatarama shete kerebo shikatarama Rikatarama sekete kerebo shikatarama Rika santarama I hear the Lord saying that you've tried everything You've tried everything and it's not working You've tried everything And you want to give up But the Lord declares That today is your day The Lord declares That your light has come and that you will rise in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, speak up, speak out. The Lord says, speak up and speak out. Don't keep things to yourself. Speak out and the Lord will connect you with the right people. The Lord will connect you with those that will help you. The Lord will connect you with those that don't have agendas. The Lord will connect you with those that have been destined to help you. The Lord says, speak up and speak out. And you will come out of the cave, the cave of hiding, the cave of Adullam where David and his men were, they were in that cave and they were battered and bruised men. But by the time God dealt with them, they were mighty men of valor. I decree and declare you are a mighty man of valor. People may have doubted you, but you will have the last laugh in the name of Jesus. People would have, people looked down on you, people looked past you, but no, they will come chasing you. My word for you today is speak up and speak out. Asking for help is not weakness. Scrap that rubbish tradition culture. Asking for help is not weakness. God is saying, how can I connect you with those that I have aligned for you if you're not speaking up? These people will not miraculously drop into your lap. You need to speak out so that I can connect you with the right people. 
God also says, do not judge a book by its cover. God says that there are people that I will bring your way and you will look at them and it will seem that they have nothing uh, uh, that, that, that they have. They don't look significant at all, but these people are connected. And they are your connection to the people that God wants to connect you with. So you have two assignments. Speak up and speak out. And don't judge a book by its cover because that person will be that person that will connect you with those that will help you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, commit your daughter into your hands. And even right now, I speak healing over her body, Heavenly Father. I speak healing from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Heavenly Father. Lord, people that have used her injury as a weapon against her, I come against it in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare, Lord God, that she will recover all in the name of Jesus. Everything that she has lost everything heavenly father that has been stolen she will recover fully in the name of jesus i hear that you will stand out you will not blend with the crowd no longer you will stand out you will no longer be in hiding you will stand out says the lord yeah you don't like the attention you like to keep yourself to yourself but God says, get ready, be prepared to stand out. I have work for you to do. Be obedient to the instructions I'm giving you. Yes, it feels daunting, it feels scary, but be obedient. And your life will never be the same. So Lord, I fill her with your boldness and I fill her with grace to carry out all those things, Lord God, that you have called her to do. She stands out from today in the name of Jesus. I even speak quick healing to her body. Quick healing, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that we've heard today. I thank you for the people that have come out. And even those that didn't come out, there's those that didn't come out, but Lord, I know that you touched them too. I pray, Lord God, that you begin to move mightily in their lives. Lord, give us a grace as a house to carry each other, to care for one another, to be selfless, to walk in love the apostle Paul said that I am nothing if I do not love I can prophesy I could do this I can do that but if I do not love all that is meaningless so Lord give us the grace to love each other a love that heals a love that restores Help us to forgive one another quickly. Even right now, I come against the spirit of strife. You foul spirit of strife, you are not welcome here. And even your people, Lord God, that are burdened with unforgiveness, Lord. Help them. I feel that unforgiveness. The past was hurtful, but you can't change it. The past was hurtful, but the future is better. Some of us are closed in because of previous experiences in other churches. 
Lord, give them the grace to open up. Give us the grace to minister to them. If your name is Alfred, I pray God's blessings on you. I pray that God keeps you. I pray that he secures you. And those that have slandered you, it will blow up in their face. I even heard the, the name John. And I hear God's mercy is upon you. His kindness is upon you. I hear victory is yours. Don't doubt it. I don't know what that is about, but God is saying don't doubt it. Victory is yours. I'm hearing the name, it's either Mo, Morissa or Marissa. And I'm just hearing favor. So get ready for favor. Lord, we bless you for this word, we magnify you. Help us to be doers of this word. Everything we need to be to be a community that honors you lord help us yes. give us the strategy the blueprint lord god yes. give us willing hearts oh god yes. we bless you yes. in the name of jesus we pray yes. amen come on celebrate jesus